morning in progress. All right, uh, Buju, everybody. Thank you for joining us today on this Memorial Day weekend. Buju. Dujunakas. Awanakwe. Ojibwe mong. Ivy. Nindijunakas. Jagi nashi mong. Gichi onigami indun jiba. Eko indenano ki. So uh, my name is Ivy Vineo. I work at ACO. Um, my family is from Grand Portage. My mom and grandmother are members there. And uh, I uh, am the cultural arts coordinator at ACO, the American Indian Community Housing Organization. And uh, last October to January, January we had the Manadu Mainans uh, uh, group exhibition that Wendy Savage, who is uh, one of the instructors today, uh, cu curated that show. And uh, she was also exhibited in the show, uh, her works, uh, along with Karen, her sister Karen, who is uh, also the instructor for today's session. And so um, we're really grateful to have them here to do this workshop for you all. Um, it's a two hour workshop. And uh, we may not get done um, with, I mean, you might not get done with your, your pouches, um, but hopefully you will be able to. But if not, I will send the recording out to you all um, to just have for some guidance for later. Um, this session is for uh, beginners and, and that's what the, it was intended for. And so please be patient for some of those of you that might be um, master beaters um, and have uh, years of experience. Um, I also, um, you can, you know, um, ask questions, please ask them in the chat and there might be time when we can open it up to where you can ask in, you know, unmute and ask your questions. Um, I'm going to post a link to the, the cert, to the workshop survey. Um, we need to do this for the grant that we received. And speaking of grants, I'd like to thank the Arrowhead Regional Arts Council for funding this activity as well as the Minnesota uh, Department of um, Human Services Behavioral Health um, Division uh, through our uh, Wasaya Healing Grant. And so those two, thank you so much. And um, I, uh, the last thing I'm hoping is that um, when you're done with your project or in progress with your project, if you take photos and you post those to Facebook, if you could tag ACO galleries, A-I-C-H-O galleries, um, so that we can see what your project turned out like. Um, I did put Tobacco Asema Apakozagan out this morning um, to ask the spirits for um, guidance and um, protection for Wendy and Karen today as they they teach us um, about beading and beadwork traditions and all of us that are participating today um, that we're protected and that we move forward in a good way. And so with that, I'm going to turn that o turn it over to our instructors, Karen Savage, Lou, and Wendy Savage. So miigwech. Thank you very much, Ivy. You're uh, yeah, hello. Nice seeing all you folks. Looks like you're from many different places. Right now, we're coming to you live from the Fond du Lac Reservation, which is near the tip of Lake Superior. We uh, have extreme weather, one, ex one extreme to the next. So we get to, we get it all. We get it all. Um, Today, we're going to do a small personal project. Um, this is for you or for someone that, you know, you like a lot um, or that you think could use something like this. Um, it's, a, it's personal adornment, so it is a piece that you'll be wearing. Um, I'd like to show you a few of the finished products. Um, so you can get a good idea of, of just what this scrap of leather is going to turn out to be. 
actually, this leather is really awesome. Um, as you know, it smells like smoke. And uh, it's brain tan smoke deer hide, which is really, really nice to beat on. And the reasons for that is, as compared to a commercial type of hide, is the uh, the skin, andro, what's that called? The top of your skin, andro something, you know. Um, it has been broken down. The fibers have been broken down during the process, uh, the tanning process, which basically means, I'm going to very simply put it, it's like it's been turned to felt because the fibers have been broken. So you know how felt just kind of mesh together like that? That has, is what has been done to this hide during its tanning process. Um, it's probably when you really push on that hide with a wooden paddle type thing um, that breaks up the fibers and the epidermis. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah, it breaks that epidermis up because that epidermis, you might notice sometimes if you try to beat on commercial hand tan, uh, commercial leather, that it just kind of pokes and pokes and pokes. And that's because that epidermis is still intact. Whereas with the hand tan, um, it's been, those fibers have been broken up and, and remeshed together. So getting a needle through this is relatively easy. Um, I, I would say, this is your prize. This is this is this this is a uh, this is a really awesome piece of leather. The leather in itself is awesome, and um, it can be kind of difficult to get a hold of unless you know of a few places or if you tan your own hides. But as far as price goes, it's at least three to four times more costly than your regular uh, commercial tanned hide which they use a lot of chemicals for. Um, with the hand tanned hide, uh, it's the brain that is the chemical that is used to help soften and process it. Okay, um, I think that uh, I'm gonna show you our, our finish, uh, some finished pieces. Oh, let me get my camera, my other camera. Uh, we'll try this one. Okay, here they are. Move that little. There we go. You're getting, you're getting it, sister. All right, we have three right here, and I just want what I would like you to notice is um, the bottoms. Um, this one is plain, and but you know these two have decorative beads on the bottoms, and. Um, that's one way to finish. Yeah, that's one way. That there, There's two different ways where we can finish this bag today. If you want to put in the extra time uh, at the end, um, you can do your, your strings of beads like this. Also, if you're like a hyper beater, that's cool too. You can also bead the, uh, the leather strap. This is just three beads on, go under, come up. Three beads on, go under, come up like so. Uh, you'll notice though that these two do not have um, the beads on the neck. What should we call this? The tie. Yeah, the, the tie. Should we, I'm going to refer to this as the tie. I'm going to try to be consistent with some of this terminology. But what, one more thing I want all of you to notice is when you look at these two hides right here. Now this uh, white hide, it's also brain tan, but it hasn't been smoked. So it is the smoke that gives it the color and i'm gonna say flavor but really it, it's the smell um so yeah and and one another thing i'd really like you to notice about these is these bags are turned inside out to sew maybe you can see it on this one a little better so we're going to be doing that also and another thing is this flap part right here is sewn into the side so this bag whatever you have in here um maybe you want to keep a a gold little ring in there or or, or maybe a dollar bill a hundred dollar bill or, or maybe you know something that's like sentimental to you um can be held in this bag because it's not you can get in and out of it but not all that easy it's more for like a spare key 
you're going to have to use your imagination and think about your lifestyle and just what exactly you might want to put in this a keepsake a lucky charm that's what i would put in there a lucky charm talk, talk about the designs all right um we're gonna do a simple design today um and it has two names and i can't remember the other name but i'm just gonna call it the lazy stitch it's not lazy at all Lame. but lane stitch all right the lane stitch there's a, there's a, yeah it's, and when you look up historically you'll find out it's called the lazy stitch but people are being it doesn't sound really nice so they're calling it the lane stitch but historically you'll find more under the lazy stitch but it's mm. uh it's a different way of beading than than applique it's, and you can make designs really simple you can see just by changing colors of lines, you know, like you've got three lines of gray here, then three lines of red, three lines of gray. If you're a beginner beater, that's a simple way to do this. And that is what we're going to do. Now and then you can see the more, the more, um, you can do this out on graph paper just with little dots. You have a line of red, line of gold, but on the end there's a red and then like four, gold and then a red and then a red and a gold and three black it's just okay let me make count. simple designs this bag right here is the simplest bag this is just i believe it's we're going to put on either nine or seven beads going across you're going to start okay. at one end and go to the other then go back and forth and back and forth basically that's what this is this is a one line this is a two line there's a line here and there's a line here. This is also a two line. So we have it all. We got it for you overachievers and you folks who just love the simplicity of um, your beads. And now this is only two colors. You can do rainbow colors if you want. Um, you could do like this has this is three rows, three rows, three rows. You could do four rows, two rows, three rows, four rows, two rows, three rows um it will become it's up to you and how you uh, how complex you want to make this which is what i really which is why i really like this um type of beadwork and this little workshop because you can keep it simple or you can get it complicated it's it's up to you to, to do that let's show these Oops, all right wait, wait. Uh, you know while we're doing while i'm talking you can be threading your needles So it can take people a while to do that. Here are, are some more of these. Uh, I think they're smaller bags. Actually, a, these look like a variety of sizes. But if you're just looking at the design elements, and, and this one I kind of like because it's got Thunderbirds. You can see the edge on this one. He's done a little zigzag. Oops, close. Karen and Wendy, how how much thread do they need on their needle? All right, um, they are going to need let's say one arm length and a half, one and a half arm lengths plus um, single a single strand. Single strand. One and a half a single strand basically means you're going to not have a knot have a knot on one strand now when you do when you thread your needle i'm gonna fix my camera here okay i have my needle here when you thread your needle what i like to do and i've watched people struggle with this um what i like to do is bring the needle to the eye rather than bringing the thread to the eye and here's my arm so you can just take your arm that's your measuring tool and see how far you can pull so i'm going to show you how i like to thread a needle i'm going to do this with out a magnifying glass so bear with me i have this i have this um 
piece of thread here, kind of squeeze between my two fingers like that. And then I like to um, take the eye of this needle and just wiggle it into the thread. Okay, you're gonna need to get good at threading your needles. Um, they have two needles. They have two, good. They're the one needle's a leather needle. And one needle is a all right we're, we're what we're doing right now is we're threading up our beading needle which doesn't which does not have a have a serrated edge it's not serrated it's really sharp three sides of sharpness okay so and while you're threading your needle, oh, let's go to this. All right. We're thinking about the design of your bag and how you're going to, you know, design the front. You're only going to be working with a square because if you see how the. So anyway, th th that's what these pictures are. If you don't, yeah, no, I'm one back here. You know, you could do. These are just simple line designs here on this one. You could do circular designs. You can do little crosses. These are, this is a fully beaded one. Here's a great example of uh, lines. And the, wait now, these are fully beaded. And I just found these on the internet. You can just look on the internet if, if you have access. And here's a whole big, wonderful bag of all kinds of super duper fancy ones all the different styles and the different designs so that's just what that was for is visual aids and then when you're looking at your pouch this is like four inches from the top the top and then your flap goes over like this so in reality you're only working with a square that's about two and three quarters so this this is it this is the square that you're going to be beating this size you can also if you don't want a square flap you can round that if you want you can fringe this if you want and then this is where you fringe but it folds up like this it's a very very simple bag because your hide is so precious you don't want to waste anything so this is just this little area that we're dealing with right now is you're, you decide how you're gonna design that. And you can take a pencil and, and draw on it with a pencil if you want, if you wanted to do those circles like that. Or they make these really fancy water soluble quilting pens. Sometimes I've used that. In the past, what they used to use uh, before they had any of this stuff is they used to take paste make paste out of water and flour and then they would dot but i don't recommend doing that anymore because that attracts moths <laughs> and like museum pieces they'll you know if you have pieces that go into museums and like both karen and i have pieces in there they will ask they used to ask us this is way back in the in the 70s did you uh did you have a uh, flower on there because they won't accept it because it'll attract moths to their museum pieces and the, they'll eat everything I'm full of little useless information which is like good. that, which is, which is like that. So um, I think design, what takes me the longest is not the design, but it's the color choice. Sometimes I spend three hours just deciding what color and you have enough beads in there. It doesn't matter. What are your favorite colors? That's why, unfortunately, this is a Zoom one, but it would have been better in person because you could have personally chosen the colors that you wanted to do. Okay, let's let's get started on our design. All right. Um, there's something I, I need to make very clear. And that is that this flap is going to be sewn in to this, which is which is what's gonna hold it down. But you know what? Um we're gonna deal with that later. All Karen, right. Karen, we have a question. Okay. Yeah, so are we using one strand? of thread or two we're using one strand so put a knot on the other end the long end put a knot on the long end and uh my knots like triple i overdo things though 
but um, back in the day, you probably wouldn't use a knot. You would just do stitches to hold it into um, place. And there's like, there's been beading contests, not so much anymore. But one of the things that would be looked for as an esteemed beater would be your lack of knots. You, you don't want to see the knots. Uh, we're going to hide this knot. Um, so, and we're going to hide this knot behind this pouch. Um, there is a way to bead, but we're not going to do it today. There is a way to bead that um, you would, um, let me see what camera I got on. There is a way to bead with absolutely right on the surface and not going through this hide, but we are not going to do that. You're going to mark your all right the first thing i'd like you folks to do once you get your needle threaded is take your bag and fold it to where you want it this is kind of crooked here i'm going to straighten out my line um because it's kind of crooked i don't want it crooked so i'm just going to straighten out this here. Okay. All right. So I would say it's four, four inches. Four inches. Approximately four. She start out at four inches. Let's it, start at four. Do you All like right? that? Do you like that look? I I like the look. Well, it's up to your individual. Maybe well, I like it a little longer, personally. All right. So, and then this, as you know, and I've been telling you like over and over again, this flap's going to come down. So no beadwork will be here. Um, I would not put a line there. I would just take my ruler and just kind of go like that. So now I can kind of see where that is, that, that line is. There's a little small impression. Okay, let's find the center of this. Oh my gosh, let's see. The center is, now I got to do math. That's all right. What is it? Uh, it's three, so it's only two and a half. Okay, two and a half. No. I will use a pencil. I don't I don't no, like to use a pencil. No, no one and a no, half. One and a half. See the math thing? I'm just gonna go down here and just put a tiny mark. Thing about the pencil, you can't get rid of it. So you're gonna you probably wanna cover that. Um and then what I'm gonna do is I don't want to bead all the way to the bottom of this. I want a margin of about half inch. half inch to a quarter. You can decide half inch to a quarter. I'm going to do, what do these other bakes have? This bake here has about a quarter, quarter of an inch of hide showing on the bottom and you want that because you want your beadwork framed you want it framed by the leather and then here's the it doesn't matter how high you go but you'll probably go right to the end of this flap okay um now i have a question let me look at the time the time is Ooh. all right I'm going to do a, and we, we have time for this. I'm going to do a, um, there's a six to eight. I don't know if I should do a double or I should do a double. All right. I know what I'm, I'm going to do a double. So and my beadwork's actually only going to be about, I'm finding my center point down to a quarter. I got a line. That's all I'm going to do. Or you could use chalk. Too. You could use chalk. Chalk's better. If you don't have chalk, you can use this pencil. But just believe me when I tell you, you cannot get this out of your bag. So um, I'm going to do two. I'm going to just start with one, see how far I get. I'm going to do one line. Um, something I like to do is... Take a piece of masking tape 
and tape it up, tape it on where I'm going to bead, and then just go over that masking tape. I'll show you what that looks like. I could have got your masking tape. Well, she's getting the masking tape. I was going to talk a little bit about beads and uh, where did the beads come from and uh, how did they get here? By 1854, during the fur trade, the majority of the tribes had beads. It was a trade item and it, they came from uh, Vienna in Italy and it was a huge, huge process. The whole, the whole city was nothing but beads and it wasn't a cheap trade item. They're expensive and if you know how beads are, the price today, when I first started beading, I was 17 and you could buy a hank of beads for 50 cents. That's how old I am. I don't think you can get a hank of beads for less than $3 up to $24. Okay, she's doing her little, this yeah. is a, what is that, a quarter yeah, inch? Yeah, this is a quarter inch because I don't have the half, uh, half a, inch. a half inch, but I got this quarter inch tape. You can even put saran. Oh, not saran. Cellophane tape would work too. Even a piece of paper. So that's what I got so far. When I when I teach elementary students, this is what I do to their um the area that they're gonna beat over because they need a guide. Um I recommend that if you want to, you can draw a line on each side of here if you like, or you can get a piece of masking tape and um, do what I did. You could even use a piece of cellophane tape. That'd be cool also. All right, I'm ready to start this. Let me get my camera a little bit closer, right about here. Okay. I'm going to start at the bottom. I have more control of the design if I start at the bottom. And I say that because my I still have room up here to bead. But um, all right, I'm coming in on one side of this. OK. And coming up from the bottom. Coming up from the bottom. My knot's hidden back here. On the inside on the inside of the bag if you look at this oh stop look at your hide one is the kind of rugged and rough that's the inside the real inside where it's a little nice with a nice terry like nap on it kind of yeah. even that's the outside decide which side you want it's it's personal preference sometimes i like that ruggedy side yeah because she's rugged because i'm rugged Okay, um, once I have this on, I, I don't like to say I'm a lazy beater. I like to say I'm an efficient beater, okay? So, I'm just gonna put this right here. Here's my, my tray. What I like to do is take a strand and I don't know, how many beads are going to go across this, but I'm going to count it right now. Um, it is, come here, little beads. It is one more than that, which is, ooh, I got it. I'm going to count these. Please be an odd number. Three. Eight. Mine are eight. So here's what I like to do. Okay, I got this string, this string right here. You can just pick them up one at a time if you want. Maybe later you want to just kind of go like this, wrap it on your finger, this whole big long strand. Take your needle, go through it, pick up eight. Well, I don't know how many yurts are. You oh, they're all be, the same size. Yeah, but I don't know how big their tape is. Oh, that's right. So I got eight. Now I'm going to go directly. My, my beads are on there right here. I'm going to go directly across. I'm going to try to keep it straight. And voila, first one's on. And I like it. 
and I just started. Okay, now I'm going to come up right next to. Can you see me? Right? It's blurry. There. It should adjust. I'm going to come up the same, the side I went down, I'm coming up just like swimming. You go down and you come up. All right, I'm up. I want to know if everyone's this far. Yeah, I was just going to ask if we could just halt for a second to just yeah. ask if there's questions. Yeah, I want to know if everyone's this far. I'm going to wait. Oh, you have two needles and one has more of a sharper pointed end. That's your leather needle. That's what we'll be sewing the sides with. And then that little itty bitty bitty needle is your beading needle. And it'll get all bent up. They're making needles much more cheaper than they used to. And they're very expensive now. Everything has gotten extremely expensive. So um, if you bend your needle, that's all right. Are there questions from the, from the participants? You can unmute and ask if, about this process right here. Or in the chat. Or are, are we all good? We're thumbs up. Okay. All right. We ready, we ready to start this show? Yep. Okay. Do the second one. Okay. I'm going to do the second one. Um, I am going to do the same color. I'm going to do it um, three times. That's a really old time blue. I like the old time colors the best. This is a real classic old time. You know, the colors of beads have, have changed a lot since I started beading. And personally, I don't know why, but I like to stick with these the colors that I first started beading with. I, I respect your new beaters, you know. I respect them and the really awesome things that they make and their, their use of artistic freedom to create whatever they want because that's what it's all about. Um, I just personally like the old colors because that's what I grew up on. All right, I got this, look. It's hanging there. I'm ready to tack it down to the other side. It's relatively self-explanatory. You might mess up, but hey, that's all right. You know, hopefully you'll mess up on the back. So now I got two lines. Okay, we have about, I would say, we could get this done in like 30 minutes. Um, so I remember when, uh, when um i was making a really big beaded piece and i'm going to show you old time colors just this one i'm using it's just it's this medium blue you have and this powder blue these are some of the older colors but back in the day it was about maybe 10 15 years ago i was um i wanted some old time colors sometimes i'd get those beads off of old pieces of beadwork that you know you find at a thrift shop or museum even old purses that that were not even native made but made from a certain era i'd like to find those kind of beads and collect them but what happened was there's this dude i know he's a taxidermy and he lives in uh, southern minnesota and he uh he knows the natives around there and he um, would, uh, he'd have beads for sale. And I'd go buy beads from him. Then he told me, I went there to get the old colored beads. He said that they quit making them. Um, in Paris? It that was, it, that, was in, uh, that was in Cosmo. Oh, no, 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 the beads came from Paris. Oh, those beads. Oh, yeah, the ones that came from France. All right, here's what, here's what I told him. I said, hey, you know what? I really like those. I really like the old color beads. This is this is before. I said, I like the old style beads. He says, yeah, a lot of people like are requesting those. So they got the old recipes. They dug out the old recipes. This is in France. 
um, they made beads in France also. This actually is called a French blue. Um, he says, yeah, a lot of people are requesting the beads. So uh, they made a, they found the old recipes and mixed up the, the new old colors, which is great because the beads that I used to collect of uh, antique pieces, they're really fragile. Plus another really awesome thing was they made those old style colored beads um, brand new and in different sizes. Right now what we're beading with is a size 10 bead. I like to bead as a size 10 bead. I've done smaller beads, but I'm too old for that now. <laughs> so I need a little bit bigger bead. I like the red. I'm gonna do two rows of red. I'm just kind of making this up as I go along. But anyway, I, I got a whole bunch. I, I'd buy the kilos of beads. You know, I don't mess around with that small stuff. I'd buy a kilo of beads. And um years went by. I needed more beads. I went back to that dude from Cosmos and I said, Hey, I need some beads. He said, Well, they quit making them. I said, well, What happened? He says, well, you know, that company was, they were there since, who knows, okay. for sure, 1800s, 1700s, maybe, way back then, anyway. He said, the, the kid doesn't want to do it. His ch The children don't want to take up the business of the beat, making those. It was a family business. So the, the kids don't want to take up the business. Oh man, I don't know what happened though. I don't know the end of all that, but I think somebody got a hold of that beat company. I kind of like these colors. I'm gonna do three, two, one. A simple three rows of blue, two red. I'm gonna do another color. I don't know what though. I'm gonna stripe it. That's what I'm gonna do. Stripe it? Hmm. I have a question. All I, right. I have a question. So um Wendy or Karen, um, can you tell share about what did um Anishinaabe or other tribal nations use uh before uh the these before beads? the glass beads? Yes. Yeah, that's the classic question you always get is, well, what are, because we've been beading for 10,000 years. That's why we did that beadwork show, because it was going on that long. So people always say, well, what did you use before you had glass beads? And it was simple. You used everything from, from nature. You would use stones. You would use seeds. You would use uh, semi-precious stones, like things out of pipestone, things out of silver, things out of copper. Quills were another thing, even, you know, little bird bones and, and, and things like that, and toes of animals and bones of animals. So the, they're, they always decorated. I used to, we used to say, what indigenous woman wouldn't decorate herself? And well, you know, women love to, to love self-adornment. I know some guys who do too. <laughs> so, so, and, you know, there was silver, there was gold and shells, you know. Uh, Many, many shells, shells were, were doing in. Yeah, I think quill work probably um, predominated uh, uh, beadwork. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, but I fell in love with beads when I was 17. And in, in that book, I wrote about my love for beads. And it's, it's like, they're just so seductive. They're just tactile. They're beautiful. The colors. You know, and, and they're so easy to transport. That's why they were the perfect thing that for the fur trade. They came and they were in these hanks and they were, you could just pack a whole bunch of them all together. And if you go to my house, you open any drawer and you're going to find beads. Uh, I was, I'm downsizing. I've been at it for a year. I do it real slow. And it's like more beads. I kept going, oh my God, I have beads everywhere all over this house <laughs> and i'm going now i know why i'm broke i'm putting a color stripe in this and i really like the color stripe can you see it what i did i put two yeah. blue and then the four yellow i'm gonna i'm gonna do that i like it beautiful 
Mm-hmm. So we're, we, you can just like play with colors when you do this type of stitch. See how seductive it already is? <laughs> you're going to fall in love. You're all going to fall in love, which is good. Well, I used to teach um, K-12. I have to start, you know, first and second graders. I'd start them with noodles. You know, like those those uh, tubular shaped noodles. I'd start with those, and we'd put them in the uh, first. We'd put them in dyes. That was before I got smarter. We could have just used magic markers to color them, but we'd put them in dyes to color them, and then we'd start stringing that way. Start stringing up those noodles. All right, I'm gonna do another line of this. Do another line. I just want to um, tell the participants again that if uh, you're taking pictures of your work in progress or a final picture and you post it on Facebook, if you could tag ACHL Galleries, A-I-C-H-O Galleries, that would be great. We'd love to see your work. This should take us about, I'm watching our clock here. Um, this should take us about, oh no, look what I did. It's good that I did this. I'll show you what to do about mistakes. All right. You're going to learn not to make mistakes because it's, it's hard to fix. I didn't put enough beads on this. So I'm, I, you can try it if you don't believe me. <laughs> but I'm just going to tell you the right way to do this is to take your needle off and pull the string up. When I was a new beater, I thought, oh, heck no, I'll just turn this upside down and, and go through that way. If you want to try it, go ahead, but you're going to have two mistakes to fix if you do it that way. But, and I've done that, so, and I don't know. I don't think I've bad, ever though. got it right. So I got to take this needle off and pull it out. She's ripping. It's called ripping. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a question from a participant. Oh, we are just running straight across back without anchoring, correct? Correct. That's why it's called the lazy stitch. Yeah. I'm um, no anchoring in the middle. No. Nope. No. If you want to, you can anchor it. Well, if, you, if then you would just do another line. If you wanted to anchor, you would just do two lines instead of the one that I'm doing right now and um, with less beads. We're not quite that fancy yet, but yeah, like for example, this piece of beadwork, this is only minus eight that I'm working on now. This one's eight, but this one's five, or is it six? Six. They're, those are six. These are only these are only six, and that you can see I'm folding it like this. You can see this was two, two lines, whereas this is this is one. So I'm not sure how you folks, if you want a hand tanned hide, um, Google it. <laughs> no. Yeah, Google it. And um, because I think you're going to become spoiled. Yeah, you, I, I, you're yeah. going to, you're going to become spoiled. And here's, here's how I look at this, how I look at it. If you're going to take the time, your time, your talent, your Precious love hours you're caring your precious hours if you're going to use that all that well then putting it on a quality product like the hand tanned it's worth it you're worth it plus um what i noticed is if someone like looks at a piece of your beadwork and if they see that it's hand tanned, 
Whoa. You just shot up in the point. I think you're going to have do one more like this. Yeah, once you use a brain canned buckskin like this, you're spoiled. You don't want to go back. But, but sometimes you have some, to. Yeah, sometimes you have to. And it's going to cost you no less than 250 probably closer to 300 to 350 dollars to get a chunk of hide to get a to get a full one you get a full one about, that's about a small one and and that's uh, that's the price and i i took a watercolor class years and years ago when i was doing my master's thesis i couldn't stand it because it was too linear so i took a watercolor class from a very international famous artist and he's the one that got me into only use the best paper, only use the best paints, only use the best, because you never know when you're going to get that one masterpiece and you don't want it on cheap paper. So I always bought expensive Arches watercolor paper, which now goes for like $12 a sheet, but I'm worth it. And it's the same thing with your beadwork and your hides. You're worth it. Don't buy cheap beads from Walmart. But what if they have to? But if, but if you have to, you can. <laughs> but if you don't have the internet access, Shipwreck is one place to buy beads. We're, there's a couple other. Oh, if you're going to buy beads and you're going to make a project, you're going to make sure that your beads are all the same size. Yeah. And then you've got to get the needle also to match those sizes. And there, there are all kinds of classes. Uh, YouTube, YouTube video classes and then um Jessica Gopi does a fabulous class too. These are some people that you could write if you had a piece of paper on the side you can look at. We brought her to the Fond du Lac Community College and she's doing beadwork full time and she gets all of her beads from Shiprock and she does she taught herself how to shipwreck. Do shipwreck. Yeah, shipwreck. Like Minnesota Lake Superior shipwreck. shipwreck. And she offers an online class, but you know, and she does a lot of, but again, floral and her work is absolutely stunning. She did uh, the Minnesota Historical Society in many places have her pieces. So there's tons and tons of resources. When Karen and I started beading, there was no internet. There were no computers. We just ran around and talked to the old ladies in the museums. We went to Mille Lacs, and wherever we went, we would go to museums and research. And back then, sometimes they'd let you take pictures and sometimes they wouldn't. But that's how we learned, was just talking to old people. And you as beaters are gonna learn different techniques from other artists because they've got their little tricks and trades. Just the way we're showing you is just one way. There's, you know, you may invent your own. And that's what's kind of exciting about getting a beadwork group together is sharing. And you guys have the internet. My God, you can connect anywhere if you have internet access. So use your internet, do your research. All the museums now, are, the Louvre has got their whole collection online. I should put my collection put online. Put your collection online. I should put my collection yeah. online. Yeah, yeah, it's another thing for us to do. I'm trying to retire again. This is my last. This is my last gig with Ivy. <laughs> hey, his sister. What? Wendy. <laughs> she says it every time Ivy don't listen to her. <laughs> okay, we got a question about the hide. And okay. so, um, is it around four hundred dollars for a whole hide, or what? Yes. You, you know what? It could be anywhere between two and four. If you, it also depends on the quality of the hide. Um, uh, if you call up this dude named Litza and you ask him, um, I'm trying to switch my camera. And if you ask him, can you do a line for me? I want red. All right. Um, tell me you want a $200 hide. Uh, you might ask for a doe skin or a buck skin. The buckskin is a little tougher. It depends on what you're going to make. If you're going to make little bags like these, I would just get a doe skin. And then um, just say, oh, he's going to ask you. He's going to say, well, what are you going to make out of it? But he's asking you for a good reason. 
And you say, oh, I'm just going to cut it up and make a bunch of little bags. So, okay. That's going to determine the type of hide you're going to, he's going to, he's going to look for to give you, to sell you. And then he's going to say, or if you were going to say something like, I'm going to make a jacket. All right. Then he's going to look for a hide with, that's very, how should I say it? It's not marked up too bad. It doesn't have bullet holes. That's it, bullet holes. It doesn't have bullet holes in it. Or scraping holes. Or too much. Well, you know, you got to scrape it with like something that's kind of like a knife, but not 100% like a knife. Um, and um, you'll get marks in it. You just go a little bit too, because uh, you put it on this round log, right? You put the hide on the round log. And to get the hair off, you got this thing. It's mm -hmm. kind of like a draw knife. And you're going to be scraping it. And sometimes you might, if you're, if you're a beginning tanner, you're going to, can you put another one on? How about, uh, put it on. And then mm -hmm. I okay. want okay, okay. a dark like blue. blue. Okay. Um, oh, then it might get like nicks in it. So then he's going to say, well, okay. Then he has to look for a hide that has a very large surface. That's like perfect. And that can be hard to, it can be hard to find those types of hides. But if you say, I'm going to cut it up into strips, all right? I'm just going to take this hide, I'm going to cut up into 150 strips. Well, then it's just going to give you a hide that's um, not as, of, of, pristine. Of, of not pristine, which is not so high quality. He'll get you a hide, which, which you know, would be fine. Okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing. It would be really kind of bizarre if a person had this magnificent hide, just beautiful, not a not a mark on it, and then cut it up into little strips. That would be kind of like, oh my gosh, why That's the heck did you do that? I mean, that hide was so beautiful. You could have made a bigger project, um, and you wouldn't see some of those. Cause you don't want to see too much. You don't want a bullet hole like, like in your jacket, like, like right in the front or the back, unless you're trying to make a statement of some kind, you know, maybe, but I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. So um, I have a few questions too on, on hide. So I'm, uh -huh. can I break in here? Oh, um, sure. So what it, is that guy still selling hides? Yeah. Like contact him. So what is his name? I'm going to, I'll look it up. One of my sister's helping me okay. out here. And then also, uh, how does moose compare to deer hide? And moose Don, is much. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Don, Don LaPerry said moose is very thick. Very mm -hmm. thick. Yeah. Thank and you, Don. They also yeah. want to know, like, what is the best for moccasins? You should have had. That one is a tough, tough question. question. You know what I think about that, the moccasins? That's what I want. Okay. The thing about the moccasins is it depends on the style, first of all. Um, the um, Ojibwe style, you, you want the sole to be uh, kind of tough. But where you do the puckering, you don't want that so tough because you want your puckers to pucker nicely, if that even makes any sense. You want your puckers to pucker nicely, okay? It's easier to get a nice pucker with a thinner hide. So it kind of, kind of, I think that, well, let's just look at it from a historical perspective. If a person was gonna make a pair of moccasins, right? And you know those moccasins, they have to like be on your feet and protect you from everything that you're walking through. You know, I, I would think that a person would like get a really good hide and make the best moccasins they possibly could for their uh, feet. And, and, um, you would probably get one hide, right? And you'd position the pieces, all right? You would position the pieces that you're gonna cut out on the hide. Like, 
for example, the neck area of the hide is the thickest. I think it's the thickest, or the rear end, yeah. But then, you know, as it, you come around the body, uh, the stomach area, the hide's not as thick. So I would say, if you're gonna cut out a piece, I would like put the heel part on the tough part of the hide, and then the toe part where it's gonna be puckered, I would put that on the, um, Soul. Yeah, the soul. The like, I got lost in space. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do we, how do we get this one? To, oh, let's see. Just go like this, sister. Oh, no. no, no. All right. I'm going to get some. I'm going to show you another photo while you're beating. Not that one. I got three cameras here. Let me, let me try. Yeah, that one. This one, sister, right here. Okay. What we have here. Uh, I don't know. Just... I'm gonna just go like that. Yeah, you'll get it there. Ta-da! Okay, this is a pair of mock locks. Those are winter boots. And when we're talking about the difference of what hide to use, if I was gonna do a pair of winter boots, I'd do the thickest hide I could get. This is the commercial elk hide. It was really, really difficult to sew through. And I did a workshop with elders. And this is before. My eyes went to <laughs> went, so um, that's one thing that I do. And you can see, you know, the puckering around here. That was really, really hard to do. And I just stuck one day in the middle of the winter. This is just propped up next to my stove, so you know it's not done really well. But it was so hard to bead on this thick. You can see the thickness of it that I did the beadwork actually on a piece of wool, and then sewed that piece of wool onto the top of the, of the mock locks. I'm taking these apart and redoing these because I don't like them. But that's one of the other things that I do is a thicker hide for a, a winter a winter boot. But that's just one thing that I did. We have another question. Uh, Candace has a question about fixing mistakes. Oh. Did, so Candace, did if, I don't know if you want to unmute and ask the question. You could do that. Okay, Candace. Let's, let's see what see you what got. got. Ah, okay, hold on. I gotta fix how I see this. Okay, so my needle keeps coming undone, so I've had to start over. But how do you keep, how do you get, like if I mess, this isn't very tight, how do you make it retight again? Um, Like it got untight while I was like working oh, oh, on it. Oh. Yeah, go like this. Um, pull this one up. Hold on, let me switch views again. Okay. I pulled that one up. I'm gonna pull this next one up. Just keep going down. Like shoelaces? Yes, like shoelaces. Like shoe okay. Yes. <laughs> good, good, good. Kids are fun. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yep, yep. That's there good. Is a pair of baby moccasins done with uh uh, the brain tan and they see all these little puckers these i had sitting in a drawer for 10 years when i was going oh my god finding beadwork everywhere and our dear friend was having his first grandson and so i put him in a little box and i said here you go and he just about fell over when i gave it to him but it was his daughter's first and only baby but this again is this is how we start out with fond du lac is we start out doing baby moccasins and then this pattern we got from a dear friend, Winnie LaPrairie, and she got this pattern from Ada Yankee, who is now passed on, and she was from East Lake. And uh, we passed this pattern out in class, and I think it's always important historically, don't say, this is my pattern, this is my baby moccasins, this is a pattern from Ada Yankee, and she's from East Lake, Minnesota. Minnesota. You, you have to give credit. You just don't take a pattern. That's that's one of my pet peeves. You just don't take something from someone. Yeah, but you know what? I think when it comes to, to patterns and and uh, designs, beadwork designs, they're shared. They're, they're, yeah. They belong to the tribe. Um, unless, you know, like you do your own symbol. 
and it wasn't uncommon for like you know how like like with some there's something called the family crest um there are some families who have like a certain design that you know they've created for their family there are those type of designs too okay here's an I'm, i've got my ipad Ta -da! oh uh -huh. this is karen's beadwork for her cradle board this is our this is our nephew they get passed around a lot so here are some classic floral beadwork and when you did that when you were in your I 20s was, yeah i was in my 20s she's in her 20s and i had my bait one of my babies yep and then she turned these into a yoke <laughs> mm -hmm. so these are just pretty pictures pretty pictures for everybody to see how's their time looking what ivy i sent you uh litza's it's 104 yeah, it's 104. litza taxidermy and then we have another here's a uh, here's a contemporary we and we brought some guy to fond du lac too and we did this cradle board and this little boy is now five but this was a, a diff, another cradle board with a little some other beadwork on it he's in the sugar bush so um yeah both karen and i are former college instructors <laughs> but no she's still working i'm trying to i'm trying to retire ivy <laughs> but they keep dragging don't me out. believe her this is the seventh time i've tried to retire but anyway um so once you get beating you, you get beaded addicted another artist that you should look up is uh jamie okama she works with all those antique beads and she, she's into fashion now so when, when you when you're bored and you're laying in bed as you get older you can't sleep at night so you just lay in bed and you start googling and looking up everything on on the internet so she's another one she's done those beautiful fully beaded boots that have a a bluebird on them that mattel stole and put on a barbie doll are you sure about that? i'm positive all right you look it up because i want to see it all right yeah she had a big thing yeah so that's another thing about miss that's my other complaint about misappropriation and then it happened with christy belcourt too yeah. another beater but jamie okama um yeah her her work and she's got you can look her i think on youtube and she'll show you how she be, the woman is, is the most fastest quickest beater i've ever seen in my life beating takes time but like i would tell my students my elementary students say hey it takes patience but it makes patience okuma jamie o-k-u-m-a that's your last name here they are Ta -da. i'm almost done with mine i only have to do one two three four five more rows Oops. One, two, three, four. Um, but folks, these are boots. It went off, sister. Oh, oh crap! That's what okay, happens when two, you touch stuff. Three, four. Here's your boots. Ta -da. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ready? Wow, look at those are cool. We know where we at. Whoop. Wendy Don uh, LaPrairie said, Miigwech, Wendy, for acknowledging Ada. Oh, see, she knew. Okay, these are this is Jamie Okama's work. And see these boots here? Can, yep, that's we can all see bead. You, you can just look her up. It was wow. on, on a Google search. And the Barbie Mattel stole them and put them on a Barbie doll. I want to see the Barbie doll on proof of this. Oh, they may have taken it off. Uh, she doesn't. I, I, I'm full of useless information. I was doing a whole talk about uh, misappropriation with with artists and telling five, artists about copyright. Seven, eight, oh wait. If your thread um, 
gets kind of uh, how would you say it? Okay. Starts to get fuzzy and it's not doesn't cooperate as well as it did in the beginning. You can either change your thread or okay. if you have some beeswax handy, which I have handy, you can just I'll show you. Um, Wendy, who is the other uh, beadwork artist that you mentioned, other than Jamie? The one Christy from Belcourt? Huh? Christy Belcourt. Oh, Christy Belcourt by uh, Goki. No, no, she also was a beater. She worked with uh, Goki. Oh, oh, Leah, Leah Goki? Not, with the glasses? No, not Leah. It was Christy Belcourt. She, she started out as Goki. Jessica, Jessica is her name. That's what I was. Yeah, she goes by Jessica or Leah, but I, you know, she's fabulous. You can find her on the internet too. Or you could be her Facebook friend. Or you could be, yeah, you could be her Facebook friend. I'm, I'm in Facebook. I've been trying to get Christy Belcourt to come down to the Duluth area. area. Here, sister, do another row for me. For I only have two years. rows left. What? Okay. All right. She wants me to be. A She's a painter, but her she started out as a beadwork artist. And, and you can tell that woman's work. When I went, she had a show, and we drove all the way up to Thunder Bay, and we walked in that gallery, and honest to God, the beauty and the power of it, I almost hit the floor. All I need is two more rows. Because her work was, was so powerful. And, but she's um, now just um, working on a language camp. But uh, Allison and I have been trying, Allison, Alney and I have been trying to get her down here, but I don't know if we can. But now I'm retiring, so I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> so how's everybody's beadwork doing? Good? She's got me doing her work. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can say. If you want to get a beadwork project done, you just get up and you do it first thing in the morning. Like I used to have an earring business. I was a single mom. And I used to have an earring business and, and I had a boy and you know what it's like feeding boys. And so I wouldn't leave the house. I'd, I'd put an hour in. And I wouldn't leave the house until I had at least one earring done. So it's just it's just like anything else. It's like dedication and time. And then there are, I will say, there are some days that it's just not working. Your beads are flying all over the floor. Your needle won't work. You're busting needles left and right. And it's just not a day to do beadwork. It's just sometimes, and it, so just don't do it. Can we, I, yep. can we see, um, would some of the participants be willing to sh show their work up to the camera so we can kind of get a sense of what, where you're at? Miigwech. Wait, I'm, I'm counting, I'm doing beads here. Can't see. Oh, look, they're all, that's how you know they're, they're doing good, they're quiet. And then another thing in the years of teaching beading, beading will teach you patience. If you don't have patience, oh, nice. you're nice. going to learn. Nice, Joe. Nice oh, job. you got, look at, oh, nice. master beaters. Yay, yes. master beaters. Very See? nice. Didn't know you had it in you, did you? And we've got a really nice, cool day in Duluth. It's sunny. Well, actually, we're in, I'm in Sawyer right now. It's like a 45-minute drive from my house. We're on the lake. And my sister has a, a nesting loon out in front of her cabin. No, oh, that's not perfect. Oh, let's see, Candace. I missed it. Okay, sis. Did you do one? Nice. Nice. They're kind of sideways. <laughs> 
Oh, I wait. I did it wrong. Getting a cup of coffee. What about Shoshana? Shoshana, where's yours? See, I made a mistake. I was talking. I don't usually talk when I bead. Then I got a rethread. Pam, what about yours? I know yours is nice. <laughs> Pam Snyder. You bet my needle all the hell. I'm just going to get a new needle. I got it. Yeah, I thread it. We put two more on. And just a time check, it's uh, 120. Yep, I'm okay. going to show folks how to do the side right now. You got but, two more beads up. But you, here's what you can do, folks. I'm going to show you how to sew up one side, all right? Oh, nice. If you want to continue beading, you can. With only one side sewn up. So you'll at least know how to do that. Okay, your hands are off screen. There we go. All right, mine's da -da done. All right. Can, uh, you how, can you show us how you anchor them when you're done? Sure. Here's what you do. You come up in the middle, okay? Right in the middle of these beads. I'm right. Can you see that little needle? All right. And then just. Go down between, if you have an even number, which I don't. Actually, I made yeah, a, no, this one I only put seven on, but that's okay, I needed a mistake. Just go down between them, okay? Then come up in the middle of the next row. See where I am right now? That needle, and then, same thing, go over that row. And that'll anchor them down. I know, my thread's getting kind of funky. So that's how you can. Can you let them out for me, please? Now I'm going to do a knot back here. I'm just going to grab some hide. And of course, I'm going to do my knot three times. A minimum of two. Three if you're overachiever or obsessive compulsive, which I highly recommend. If you're not already, keep beating. Being a beater, you're going to be. That's a good skill. So I'm just grabbing hide, making a circle, circle knot, going through it. That's all I'm doing. And if I were to change thread, it'd be the same way. So I'm just going to snip this. But and I'm going to get new thread because the thread I got now, it's getting. Because the eye of that needle's kind of sharp also, it's starting to mess up my thread. So I ain't getting new thread. Starting to fray. So once you change needles now too for the hide? You're gonna change to the 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 leather needle. I got it right here for you. I don't want the leather needle. Why? Because I like this one. Okay, sure. If you want to use your leather needle, that's cool. But I'm just going to use this, the one I've been using. It's a size 10. She's got the long. You, you I got recommend you get a size 10. If you're going to work on hide like this, you need a size 10 needle. 
size 10 beading needle long a little long one some people prefer long or short yeah there's there's different some people will not bead with a long needle here show me the needle you the took the scissors all right there so here's what it looks like looks like this is scissors so, thank you. You know what? Sometimes you can find beading needles at um, Walmart. You can buy them at Walmart. You can buy them at a, a fabric store. A fabric store. Um. So yeah, check out the fabric stores. They got some pretty good ones. But but if you buy it online, like from Shipwreck, your needle is going to be awesome. It's going to be of a higher quality because those people know what you're doing with your needles. I put the shipwreck uh, website in the chat as well. Cool. But let's say like if uh, if um you absolutely must have beading needle within the next I don't know hour, you know go ahead get your needles at at the WalMarts or the at the um fabric stores you know but if you're gonna if you if you have a a project in mind that you're gonna do later you know order yourself some good needles karen or wendy do you remove the tape that's underneath the beads um no no you cut it like mine's not showing See, mine, it's still under there though but if you have some at the edge showing Fold it back, get the scissors, be careful, and just trim that tape off. But just leave it there. It's it's good. Crazy Crow is another uh trading post. And there's a lot, there's a few Native Americans now opening up their own uh beadwork shops too. So Google that uh, you know, or on the internet and look or ask that's another thing to ask um other beaters is where do you get your supplies now i'm looking for those gold plated beads and i and i guess they're selling beads at the indigenous first gift shop which is at echo too i'm going to get my camera a little higher so um and you'll notice the difference of quality the quality of beads that that you have in that kit are a pretty good quality of beads yeah they're nice they are nice. Some beads will have different sizes and, and it's very frustrating. And some artists, some like Marcy McIntyre and uh, Ellen Olson, they were master beaders. They'd pick through their beads and only find the most perfect ones there were. Some are very irregular. Every once in a while you find a lopsided bead. If you want to use it, you can use it, but I don't know, you don't have to use it. Just kind of put it in a pile of lopsided beads. So All right. Yep. And Anishinaabe, I think it's, I don't know if it's just Anishinaabe that do this, but um, can you explain the ghost bead? Oh, concept? the hidden one? Or the mistake one? Or the mistake? Um, a mistake one? Well, okay. I didn't make, I did make a mistake on mine. And my mistake is on my very last line, instead of eight beads, I put seven. But I'm gonna keep it like that because um because we as humans we're not perfect and we really shouldn't strive for perfection because that can make you kind of uh erratic or or anxious or it can make you it can make you focus on something that's not as not that important so if i would have if i would have made all this perfect and i didn't make a mistake which i really did make a mistake then i would put a i'd put a different color bead in there on purpose just to um so there would be a mistake it keeps, it keeps you humble and keeps your perspective going other people do that they, they get they get into this big spiritual thing of oh it's gonna let the spirit of bead work out and if that's the way that you want to bead that's fine some people smudge 
mm. their work before they they do their beadwork and that's fine too you know you just find what works the best for you and sometimes i've noticed other people they look at a piece of beadwork where's the mistake that is something that's actually looked for and <laughs> expected that's why you would have the ghost bead in there because that would be your mistake per se even though you intentionally did it it's still so y'all have to do a mistake okay one little mistake <laughs> you're lying one question here do you do a heart bead um mom, 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 mom. i don't know about heart beads you know there's many different tribes across this great nation and um there's probably that sound i don't know what tribe that's from maybe it's from a tribe that somebody's close to because it looks like all you folks are from all over the country um that might be something that'd be something that i would definitely look into and see if that that is something that you want to put into your work but when it comes to nishinabis here um our mistakes just just good enough just fine okay folks i'm going to show you something now this is really important so i really want everyone's attention okay can i have everyone's attention for just a little while okay i'm gonna sew this bag together all right and i would say i've taught this class many times and this is where if someone's gonna mess up they're gonna mess up here all right so you'll notice i'm gonna undo my bag okay folding it up right where i want it okay it's this flap right here that i want this flap sewn in i want it sewn in to the seam so what i like to do is put my hand right here and turn it inside out So it's in place where I want it to be. And I'm gonna show you how that looks. All right. Now, you probably don't know, but I'm gonna I'm gonna show it to you inside out. Okay. It's upside down right now, it's upside down. And I'm gonna put that up where i want it i gotta make sure it's where i want it right there and i'm gonna put this flap let me look before i tell you no okay the flap goes on the inside so here's what i want you to do i want you to do this i want you to lay it out i'll go like this i want you to lay it out Put your flap down, okay? And this goes over the flap. Then that's how we're gonna sew. And I'm gonna recommend we start here to do a whip stitch. The whip stitch is round and round and round, okay? Now let's pretend I did that. If I were to hold this here, I can see, yeah, that's gonna work kind of hard to show you but i'm going to just i'm just going to sew mine together right now but i'll do it i'm going to show you again okay i'll show you one more time all right okay this is this is the top of my bag all right here's right where my fingers are that's the top of my bag i'm going to Put my flap down first. Let's let's say it like this: flap first, flap first, flap is first. It's the first one to go down. All right. I'm just gonna go take my finger and make it stay there. And then the very very top of my bag goes to the top of that flap. 
You know what I'm going to do right now, though? I'm going to sew it together. I'm going to do it really fast. But I don't like this little thing hanging there. There's a little... Sometimes you have to trim. Don't be trimming too much, though. Tiny little trim so it even. Right here. I squeeze this together. I'm going to sew that. There's three. One, two, three layers. And then it goes down to two. Okay? That flaps in there. Do we got it? If not, show you again. Or we can rewind the tape. So I'm going to sew this this one side together. Now, like I said, if you're not done doing your beadwork, that's fine. You can still bead with only one side sewn and the other one open. So I'm going to sew this together. And I'm going to do single strand because the thread that you have, it's super strong. It's super thread. I don't know if you can find this kind of thread at the Walmart. Maybe. I haven't been there in a while. It's not it's nylon thread. And sometimes if you're in a pinch and you're you're way out, you can use dental floss, unwaxed dental floss. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. You can. you can. I would say I'm going in. Mm, I'm gonna say I'm going in, my stitch into this is about, here's what I'm gonna sew, I'm gonna sew this, I'm gonna hold it in my hand, let me see. I'm gonna hold it in my hand, just kind of curl that bottom up, and just squeeze this with my thumb and forefinger. I'm gonna squeeze this and I'm gonna sew. Now, I'm going to assume that I'm going to do two stitches up here at the top to secure it good. I'm going to assume that you folks are good sewers. So yours is probably going to be really tight, which is kind of what we want. But don't be yanking on it so hard you bust your thread because, well, that can be a problem. Now, here's what I would say. I would say you want to go in about, I'm going to get a measuring st stick and show you. Okay, you're off screen. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, thank you, Ivy. All right. If I had to take this measuring stick, I would say that I'm going in about, about a six, anywhere between 16th and an eighth of an inch into the into the high for sewing you don't want your stitch too close to that edge if you get your stitch too close to that edge we're going to see your thread after you turn it inside out and my stitches are going to be kind of tight tight and it's not going to take me too long to do this but i'm going to stitch all the way down to the other end then I'm going to flip it around for you folks. But I'm going to tell you again if you want to continue beading after you get the sides sewn, you still can because you'll have one opened end. So you can still bead. But I just want to make sure that what I really want to make sure of that you get that flap in there. So I'm going to sew. My sister's going to show you some stuff. Okay, I can show them that, that one there. Okay. And kind of flip it so they can see the edge. Okay, know. so what, what, while you're sewing, if this is another way to embellish. I'm going to talk to you about making fringe. There, there are two little cones also in that bag that you can decide what you're going to do with. But making fringe... Uh, it takes a long time also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you see there's there's one little string there and there's a little string there and there's a little string there. But you just come and she's got a, a bigger bead here, but you count like just say there's twenty there's twenty four green, then there's five blue, then there's 
four pink and then you repeat that that's all done on one long string and then you go back and then you come down and you go back and you come down and you go back it's called making fringe and there are you know you can do any color combination that you want you can put crystal beads on and, and the bead the bag that i ivy and i were in a workshop and we did a bag from grand portage and uh I put the really expensive Swarovski crystals on the bottom of my bag and the fringe took me longer. This fringe will probably take you longer to make than your beadwork or about the same amount of time. Easily. Easily. So, you know, and it's, it's just your personal preference of how beautiful do you want to make that bag? Sometimes you want your bag to be simple. There's nothing the matter with that either, but I'm in love with beads, so I'll I'll do a lot of different things and embellishment. Okay, we have a quick question on the uh, the whip stitch. Do you whip stitch all the way or just down to the bottom of that you're one gonna, side? You're gonna go to the bottom of this one side. Look how far I am already. I got those. It's kind of hard doing them three, but now that I'm at two. It's not so hard. I'm just going to tie a knot down right here at this end right here. And try to be consistent with your the width of your stitches, the spacing of your stitches. I kind of like to get it tight. And this threads some pretty good thread. You know, we're using this type of thread because, you know, if I was making a pair of moccasins, I would definitely use a thicker thread and an awl because when you're making moccasins, you know, it's got to be on your feet all day and you want a, you want a heavy duty thread. So you would use a different type. There's also that um, sinew, that nylon yeah. imitation. imitation sinew. That's a thicker thread, and some people cut that down or not. And then they're also making this firefly fly type thread that looks like it's fishing line. That's a really tough tool. I've used that. It's just amazing what, what, what they've got out today. All for us beaters. I kind of like how my stitches are going. I wonder how it's going to look though. When you turn it inside mm -hmm. out. After you get the other side, once you have both, both of these sides sewn up, <laughs> sewn up. You got to be careful when you turn it inside out. It's not easy. And you will need to take care when you do that. But I'm almost done with this. I started beating, I think I was 12 years old. All right, I'm ready to wrap this up. So I'm gonna do my three knots, same procedure. Grab some hide, make your little circle thing and go through it. I like to do it at least three times. Just grab a chunk of hide. Now I'm going to show you something about this. Uh, what I want you to do with the end of this before you cut the thread, what I'd like you to do is I'm right here, right? But there's a small possibility that that knot could show later. So I'm going to move, I'm just going to move over a little ways and do a knot about a quarter inch in just to ensure that that little tail doesn't sneak out and expose itself because <laughs> the the least you see of your thread 
the more of a pro you are. And I'm just gonna worm my way over. Try to hide that thread even more. Then I'm gonna snip it. Okay, I'm excited to turn this inside out. Right now it's gonna be easy to turn inside out. Just go like this. And I like it. Just take my finger, push through that. Not too hard. All right, it's all right, it's all right. I'll say it's all right. That's what I got so far. So, uh -huh. if I wanted to, I could just keep beating. Open this up. And you folks can keep beating too. And just, it's not as easy though, but you can still do it. Still continue beating if you're not done. Um, since this bag is, I'm gonna, what time is it? Let me look. Okay, I got 20 minutes. Um, I'm gonna show you real quick how to get your tie on. I'll show you on this, because it's my bag's still open, I'm just, I'm going to show you how to do this. Okay. What I like to do is get an all, well, something sharp, but right now I got this all. You'll, when you start your beading, you'll start to get a collection of tools. And now I need a piece of wood. So I have to find my piece of wood. And I got some. I don't worry it. <laughs> she's running outside to get a piece of wood <laughs> you just never know <laughs> what's gonna go on when the participants have a chance or have a little break if you could put in the chat where you're from and um if you're tribally affiliated or enrolled or descendant if you want to put that in the chat that would be great Whenever you have time. I could have got this. There's my piece of wood. Block of wood. Now what I like to do though, I want to figure out where my hole's gonna be. And I can do this with both sides sewn up if I wanted to. Um, or what I could do is find my middle, which is here, and determine from that point. But I would rather do this personally. I would rather do this once it's all sewn up, but I'm going to show you how to do it right now. What you want to do is get a pencil and figure. I like to have the um, I like to have the holes not too close to the edge, but a little bit, but then again, not too far in. It's kind of a, this piece looks really good like this, where, where they're closer together. Um, this piece, same thing, huh? We have that other bag handy. Right there, sister. This one's a little, they're a little bit farther apart. This is, this is what I, this is my goal. I'm going to try to get it about here. So, put a pencil mark right where I want the hole. That's where I want it. So, I'll come up. If this bag, I'm going to show you as if this bag were sewn together on both sides. I would just come up, find my spot, find that pencil mark, and then just my all goes into the wood. I like to pull it up on the shaft a little. See where my hole is. If you wanted to, 
you could use like a scissor, but I'm gonna warn you, it will, it, it's kind of dangerous because you could cut the, um, if you put too much strength on it, you could end up making a really big slit and you don't want a really big slit. And there's a difference actually between cut it, cutting a hide and piercing it. Um, piercing it is, uh, there's, a t there's a tendency for the hide to you know, go back together. Whereas a cut, that's going to be a cut. That's not, that's going to stay like that. But I got this in here. I do want to trim. I want to trim this so it'll go through my hole, which is kind of small. So I need to make the end of this kind of small, pointed like. And then I'm going to let's take my fingers, get them wet, and roll that bugger right up. Okay? Because I got to get this through the hole. So it's pretty, pretty small now. But what I find is you got to do it right away. As soon as you take this thing out, put that in because, like I said, that'll, it'll start to close. So I'm going to hurry up and do this. Pull it out. It might work. It might not work. It might not work. Okay. And do it again. I'm going to get do it again. Pierce it. Get ready. And while that hole's open, go through it. That worked good. And there it is. What I like to do is, well, it depends. Just that my other hole, I'm going to put over, over here. And with this other end, come up through it. But I think right now I have enough time to sew up this other edge i'm going to do it really fast and then i'll, I'll show you um then i'll i'll do this again i'll do this tie again i'm going to pull it through while, while you do that we had a request to see if wendy could show us how to do uh the fringe okay the <laughs> fringe the fringe um yep. Or just show the process, I guess, or the. Okay. Well, you, you, okay. Here's what here's what I would do. Um, I'd use a double, double yeah. thread. I'd use a double thread. I'd use a double thread, so that means you bring your threads together and knot it on the end. Can you switch cameras for us? All right. So I've got my needle. You you bring it down to the middle. So you've got two threads. You're going to bring them together. This is this is your double thread. I'm going to get you a piece of hide. And then you just tie knot. It's hard to stand this white paper. Um, oh, I've got one there. Just go like this. I'll staple it together, and then you can um, do it on this side. I'm okay. trying to get that knot on the inside. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. You might want okay. You might want the knot on the inside. But so that's you, because I'm obsessive. You and uh, down, you'd, you'd come down. So I'll just say this is the bottom of my hide. And well, let's make you a. Want, you want it staple? Uh -uh. No. You don't want we need to see it. It's off screen. Oh, okay. Got it. We've got so many things all going on here at once. Thank you, Ivy. Whoa. There we okay, go. So you see, it? there's a mark on the hide. So, you know, you want to thread it all the way through. You know, pretend this is all sewn and thread it all the way through. It's on the, you want the knot on the inside. Bring it, bring it through. And I've got the double thread. Then again, it's just counting your beads. You know how many be how how you des this is the part of designing your fringe. And uh, here's my glasses. And what we had on this, we had you know like what's your what's your base color that you want? And uh, the base color on this one is green. 
and you know you would go off you you can go off the colors that you you beaded you did and i would put at least you're gonna need a lot i know i'd put at least 15. Uh, i just start stringing beads you might want to do this you know figure this out before laying your beads out on uh oh we'll show you that little beaded mat too so see you just start stringing your beads wait, wait. I'll be in charge of the camera. These are, this is one of those mats that you can put your beads on. They're kind of fun because as you get older, they're going to go, your beads are going to go all over like they just did, and, and it's easier to pick up. So I'm just going to pick, you know, this is the way I do it pick up beads. And you, you need, and I usually have a piece of paper because you want everything to be consistent. So say this is 15 beads. I'm going to do four or five reds, four reds. And now, you know, that's, that's one side. And I'd like what the middle, I'm going to say, oh, what would make that pop? What would make that um, red pop? A blue? A blue, the darker blue. Okay, so that's half of my fringe. So now I have to repeat. So what I'm going to repeat is four red. You're just making a loop. Three, four. Or, or if you have crystals, ooh, or a special bead that you like, or even a button. I've done all kinds of stuff with old buttons. And then... You know, you just you just add on all your green. You're now doing repeating your green. And you can, you know, you can look this all, you can look up how to make fringe too. You can, you know, you can find that also. There's all kinds of places that's that's gonna tell you how to do this. There's YouTube is, is another one. Okay, so just pretend that this is it. Because, we're, you know, we're short of time. Do you see how that would, See how that becomes now a fringe? Or wait, where are we at? See, that would become a fringe. Mm -hmm. And then um, you can come up. You can go through that bead or, or come up. I would do the hide. I would go through that, that beginning bead. The beginning bead. The, your first bead. You got to go through that first bead twice. Twice. And then, you know. You, once, you, I mean, once now. but. And you, you got to get the tension right. This is why it, you know, it takes a little while. Let's not go up. And this is why the fringe takes longer than anything else. And it's so beautiful. But there it is. And then you could go back through the hide, or you know, through the hide. Mm -hmm. And then you just go again. You're just making fringe. It's just making a loop. Make one more loop, sister. Loop it. Loop it. So then I'd go back up. Go and you, you know, and your spacing. You know how how close do you want it? Spacing. Wendy, how do you do that when the bag is already made? Like it's easy for you to open that thing up and access it. You can, yeah, well, you can do that with you open the bag, or if you really want to, because you have double thread, you can just stitch like along here. Oh, okay. Yeah, you just stitch along that you, bottom. You, you just stitch along the bottom. That's, that's another way to do it. That's how those ones were done. Yeah. And it, again, patience and time. So you just you just do you just do the whip stitch along the bottom, and then you know you can you can mark it, you know if you if you're really obsessive compulsive sometimes like I get like that depend upon how you're going to do it, you could mark every eighth of an inch to say okay I need to go here I need to go here I need to go here I need to go here. If you if you want it all completely balanced, you know you can just use your ruler. And go every every quarter of an inch, 
or every eighth of an inch, depending upon how much fringe you want. Those are all the kinds of decisions that you get to make. And sometimes you can find, it's driving me crazy. It's driving me crazy. Or you could put like a larger bead down here if you, if you have a whole collection of beads. And you know, or you you know, like maybe on the end here, here's your here's your cone. You you have two cones. Maybe I would put the cone like this on the end. You'd string that on also. You know, string it on. Put a couple beads here on the top, and then and string that on, and then come back up through the beads again. It's it's all the way that you want to do it. Or if you have bigger beads, so we. Like you saw, some of those uh, other small bags were just full of full of nothing but tin cones. So it's it's that's what I like is this is how you make it individual, and and you make it your own is well how am I going to design that? What's the design process? Well maybe I'm kind of bored. I think I'll look up, you know, old um, Native American beadwork and, and pouches, and I find a lot on what is that? P, P interest. Pinterest. Oh, Pinterest. Pinterest. They drive me crazy. They drive me crazy, but they have really good resources, and it, and it's like the internet. I'm just like, it's just amazing. Okay, folks, my bag is sewn up. I'm going to show you. Um, it's sewn up on both sides. Now I have to turn this inside out. That can be a little tough, and I want you to be careful. I like to stick my finger right on the beads. My fingers on that beadwork because that's what I want to protect. I stuck my big middle finger down there, okay? Caught a couple fingers in there. And then I'm going to carefully turn it inside out. And you might be thinking, what the heck? Where's their flop? It's there. It's just on the back. I got to flip it over. There. Okay. Now I want to show you a couple other things you can do. I got one hole there. All right. Now, um, you do have two cones. There's a couple things. I'm gonna get. A, I'm gonna get. See, see on my corners. I kind of like them, like that. But I'm gonna get this pencil eraser and just push it a little bit, not too much. Push it a little bit out. There. I don't want it too out there, too far. There we go. Okay. I'm going to show you some things. I'm going to fix this one over here with my pencil eraser, too. Okay, if you want to, I'm going to show you where. Let's just pretend I got this in there. There's two holes. I want to, right here, I want the two cones. Mm -hmm. So, how I'm going to do that is you have quite a bit of this. Um, strappy thing what say we're gonna call it we said we're gonna call it something so what i'm gonna do then take this i want this smaller though i'm gonna cut this cut a piece off it's about oh, let me see almost six inches but i want to cut it in half carefully i only got to get one right one side right so i'm going to cut this in half You know what else I think I want to do? Before I do this, I want to fringe this. I'm going to show you how to do fringe now. It's important that you watch this process. If you want your fringe to be straight. If you don't care, well, here's, I don't want my fringe all the way up here. That's too high. I only want it half. So I'm just, I only want it to here. So I'm just going to make an impression with my ruler. That's where I want my French, right there. Okay. I can kind of see that impression. When you make French, what you do is you start in the middle, you cut. All right. Now I got two sides. I'm going to go to the middle of each one of these sides. This is how you get your French straight. If you think, man, I'm not going to do it like that. I'm going to start over here. And just cut, 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 cut. You're going to get crooked. You're going to get crooked thread. I mean, sorry, fringe. fringe. If you do it like that, it's going to be crooked. 
So, so far, I, uh, and I'm going to cut this one in the middle. And then, same thing. Every one of these is going to get cut in the middle. Until, if I wanted to right now, if you look at my fringe, it's too, I think it's too thick. I have two options right now at this point. I can cut this one piece, I can cut it in half, or I could make two cuts to make this one piece three, but I'm just gonna cut it in half. See how that looks. I like that. Then all it is is half, 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 half. And it's making my bag look so awesome. I was worried that it was looking kind of boring, but now this thing is coming to life. All right, got that so far. So now what I want to do is with that cone and my nice thin piece, see this piece of leather, I'm going to roll it. You can, you can wet it too if you want to, can, but it'll work just rolling. You can use, use spit or real water. A little more personal though, if you use your own spits, but what do you decide? You can use coffee. You can just dip the end right into your cup of coffee and that'll work just fine and get it wet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Roll that for me, sister. And what I'm gonna do is I got my trusty piece of wood here. And I'm gonna put, I'm gonna decide where I want my holes. I want, I don't want it too close to the fringe because I'm gonna put cones on this. I want a hole. Well, I should probably use a ruler. I want my holes. Let's see, kind of close together. I'll use this side. All right, I want my hole. I'm still thinking. Mm, a half inch. Yeah, I'm going to put a hole here and a hole there. Because I want to put the cones on. Okay. Again, my trusty awl and chunk of wood. I'm just going to let that sit there a minute while I prepare this and find my cones. Found my cones. Okay. So now. I'm going to, if this isn't like, if it's not pointy enough, get your scissors and make it pointy. It should be kind of thin, actually. You want it kind of thin, this because that cone's small. So I think I'm ready now. I'm going to come up from the back. Oh, no, don't close. Oh, I better do it from this side. Get that hole a little bigger. And there it is. You might have to do this a couple times. Or use your awl. Push it through there. Uh, it's just me. I don't I don't want to make my hole too big, but I'm gonna do it this time. Okay. You got to get it right away though, because it'll close on you. I'll get it. I probably should have cut my, that piece more. That'll work. All right. Maybe, yeah. Okay, so I got one here and then what I'll do is I'll put this cone on it. I, I'm gonna get a pliers. I kind of like, 
can you kind of see can you see this let me let me put it towards you there's my little cone right there i want a little bit of this sticking out though i have my cone there but i'm gonna get a little tiny flyer to squeeze that what time is it it's 203. oh 203. all right this cone you can um squeeze it together mm -hmm. i'll use my all to just push that down these cones are how would you say they're not uh really strong so i could just use this all to crush that so it grabs that little piece of leather so and so far i got a cone on here I'll do the other side. I'll come up through that other side when I'm putting my string on and this bag, I'm going to wear it. Okay. Make my puncture. I'm just lacing up the other side. This is purely decorative. There, let me try to get it even. I kind of like it to hang down a little bit. If I wanted to, I could tie it, but I haven't decided. I get my cone on here. I got to really twist this leather. I like it twisted though. All right. Got that one on there. I can just take my awl, press that. You do that with a nail, a thin nail. Anything. It it does it nicely. All right. Now the strap. Um. There's my hole. It's closed up on me, so I'm gonna make it larger again. And I'm gonna do this strap the same way I did my what am I gonna my little tie? It's gonna just be underneath here. You can't see the hand. And cut this so I can get it thinner, twist it, because I like the twist. Oh, uh, my second hole is right, going to be about here. You're going to need a chunk of wood, though, if you have an all. So a question is, do you knot the tie at bottom, or will it, will it stay with the pinching of the cone? It's not going to come. Oh, you, it'll stay with the pinching of the cone, yeah. It will stay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, some things like if it was a different type, like an article of clothing or something like that, I'd probably secure those a little better. But it's it's just a neck piece, and you're not going to be scrapping or anything with this on, so it should be just fine. All right, my bag's about to come to life. Could you add like ribbon to this too? Sure. You sure you can do whatever you want. You could add ribbon. That'd be cool. You could even have like a ribbon tie. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. My bag's almost done. It is done. All right. What I got so far. I want to tie this though. It'll look nicer tied. So, I think it'll look nicer tied. Press it down, get it where I want it to be. Make it this so it's not messed up looking. There we go. All right. Now, let's see. I'm going to try this on.
All right. Sis, will you tie this for me? I want it here. You want it where? Right where I got it. Ooh. Right there? Yep. All right. Let's say it. Here I am, right here. Fancy. It's right here. Now, if I wanted to, remember on that other bag, I could do this. To the tie and all that is is three beads up down up down up down up down i don't think you can see the thread on this other side this person must have had a lot of patience doing this they didn't go through they didn't go all the way through they just nipped some of the hide okay that's it yeah. Any questions for me? You can find me, on find me on Facebook, Karen Savage. You can unmute to ask a question if you have a question about your project. Don't be shy. It's beautiful. I think it turned out good. It did. I kind of like these loose, though. There. I don't it know. Looks I might lovely. Thank you. Yeah. Looks lovely on you too. Well, thanks, Ivy. Yeah. I kind of like it. I like the colors. I like the fringe. What are some what are some things that you personally would put in there? I would probably put put um hundred dollar bills. I would put in some tobacco for sure, because that's all I hear. You got any tobacco? I need some tobacco. Hear a lot of that, so it's nice to have some handy. Um, I'd also put in something I was something I was would be trying to keep from other people, from them getting, like. My hundred dollar bills for sure. I don't want to mess them with that. I put it in my bag. Or precious bead. I could put in, you know, sometimes you have something that has like a sentimental value to you. Something someone gave you. You know, that's something that you you something that you hold uh precious to yourself, something that you treasure, something that maybe someone gave you that that passed on or 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 maybe you want a power symbol in here maybe your your animal is a bear you could find a little miniature bear uh figurine and you could put that in there for your your personal strength or personal power or you could if you can't do that just cut out a picture of one for now and just put that in there and uh that's lake, your power source lake superior oh you could put a lake superior agate in there whatever cool things that that define you you know something that means something like maybe only to you um and that's kind of like what you would need to decide i'm sure some things are coming to people's mind um karen or Wendy, um, I know there's a, I know we're out of time, but I, um, just what my last question is, um, Lorette, no, Orvilla Long Fox uh, made those uh, tricks, they're not trickster bags or they're oh, puzzle bags. Puzzle bags. Yeah, yeah, those are amazing. Yeah, those are. Those are. You can, you can find mm -hmm. a lesson on that too on the yeah. and, and this bag, I would say it's it's next in line to that because it's not real easy to get into. Yeah. It's um, you know it's a, it's more secure. And if you really really wanted this more secure, you could put two two more holes on, underneath it. 
you know, and then if, if whatever you have in here, I don't know, maybe you're going to be canoeing and, and you think, man, I don't want to lose my rock that I got in here. So maybe I better secure it more. Well, then you can put two holes down here and, and then thread this through that. Then it should be pretty secure. But yeah, that, that's another reason I like this is whatever I put in here, you know, it, the probability of it staying there is pretty darn good. But yeah, I'm anxious to see what, what other people do. If I wanted to, right, right up here, before I put these cones on, I could have put a bigger pony bead here, right there, and that would uh, could have held them together too. So yeah, I could even take this these cones off and put a slip a big pony bead there and that would hold those two in place. Then put my cones on. Does anyone have a question for me? Anything? Have a good afternoon. You're getting a lot of thank yous and me glitches and oh, good. Right. Good. Have a have a good weekend. Yeah everybody keep on beating and then mm -hmm. now that you've learned this technique it, it's your responsibility now to share that yep that's how we roll yeah Show it. pass it on to someone else it people can need see, it can we see some of your projects and even if they're not done uh yeah i got Progress. i mean like the the participants projects that would be great huh yeah. if we could yeah. see their Objects. I'm gonna get me some coffee for the show. Look at Ooh. that! Hey, she has boxes. Oh, oh what? Oh my gosh! <laughs> Dang it! You... it. All right. Nice. Beautiful. Oh my gosh! Nice. Diamonds. Look at that! Wow. Oh, hey, this is working. <laughs> working out. It is like, working out. Yeah, I'd like to thank all of you to, for coming along and visiting Minnesota with us. Yes. Miigwech, awesome. everybody. Um, miigwech to, to Karen and Wendy um, for sharing your knowledge and uh, skill with us with beading. And um, just want to thank uh, ARAC, uh, Arrowhead Regional Arts Council, for funding and the Minnesota Department of Health, Behavioral Health uh division for funding as well and uh this was really amazing like i i want to do it now i was so i wanted to i wanted to do it while you were teaching it but please i have an extra i have an extra one i need mean. oh that'd be great wendy like yeah so, um if again if you post on facebook please um uh tag echo galleries um i do have it in the chat and then also um the hashtags manadu mainins i put it in the chat as well i can put it again um and then echo galleries and whatever else you want to use that would be great so i'll put them in the chat echo galleries and manadu mainings Wendy, what does Manadu Mainings mean? Mini Spirit Berry. Little Spirit Berry? Yep. And Anishinaabe. So you see how um, those look like little tiny berries. That's how that's how it got its got its name. Yeah, but don't be eating them. Don't eat them all. <laughs> you can suck on them, but that's it. <laughs> I'm right. sorry. I've taught oh. elementary for too long, way too long. So Wendy and Karen, if you just stay stay on for a bit, um, but I, like if everybody else could, if you're if you don't have any other questions, you can um, leave the session and um, miigwech for for joining us. And, and follow Eco Galleries because there might be upcoming um, activities and and things like that. We're, we're still. Our, our ACO, um, American Indian Community Housing Organization, is doing a lot of our, our events still virtual because the pandemic is not over. And so um, we've been doing a lot of uh, cultural events 
uh, virtually. So you can check that out on ACO Galleries or the American Indian Community Housing Organization Facebook page. Um, and they're all free. So thank you, yeah. Ivy, for yeah, supporting us. And okay, yep. Everybody stay stay safe, wash your hands, and still wear your mask. Yeah. Oh, and your bag. And your bag. Keep good medicine right next to you. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Get go up them in. Get go up them in. All right, that was amazing. Did it work out? The three cameras did it. Was it was perfect. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you. Okay, the two things. Um, one, do you want the funny, the funny thing first, or uh, official business first? Official business. Okay. So, um, like I, I emailed you both. The check has been um, processed. And so you both will be receiving seven hundred and fifty dollars, and that will be come that will be mailed to you um, probably on Tuesday. Like they'll probably mail it out on Tuesday, so, so you'll get it Wednesday or Thursday. So just wanted to let you know that. Mm -hmm. Okay, the that's other, official business. That's official business. Oh, okay. I thought that was the funny stuff. Okay, no. go ahead. <laughs> you asked for the official business. I know. I'm just giving you a hard time. Yes, you are hilarious. Um, the, the funny thing is, um, last night I dreamt that this was a disaster. It was like, Wendy wanted to meet me at the mall because <laughs> she was going to uh, share my Zoom and you were going to be at your house doing the Zoom. So oh, God. at... at <laughs> noon there were like two people on the uh, waiting to get in but there was no karen so i'm like when wendy you gotta call your sister and she was like she never answers her phone and i'm like you got to call her because the, the session's starting and so she calls you and she's like see she doesn't answer her phone <laughs> yeah <laughs> And then, like twenty minutes into the call, oh. uh, into the session, um, uh -huh. she, she texts you, and you finally get on. But you this don't... sounds so normal. Oh, this sounds normal. <laughs> <laughs> but you wouldn't. You weren't like doing the set. You weren't on screen, and you you had your TV on, and it was blaring, and we were like, "Oh my gosh!" And we had like thirteen people on, and. It, it went back down to only two and then we just decided to not do it oh my gosh yeah well so heck no i i knew i had this i got <laughs> all this equipment been doing it for years like oh yeah yeah no problem i called it yeah. two days in advance to <laughs> oh, say, are you in town <laughs> same, same, same. Are you in town? Are you yeah yeah fine see i'm just like yeah sure i don't know what the heck you know yeah it's all good <laughs> oh my gosh yeah, so that is so funny. So anyways, just wanted to let you know that. And you know what I just realized? This is in the recording. I forgot to stop record. Good. <laughs>